hey friends, it is Mandy with Sweetly Home, and today I want to share with you three things that I'm saying no to in 2017. So the first thing that I'm saying no to is the mindless scroll. And what that means is that I have basically kind of given up mindlessly scrolling through Facebook. I love social media. I love it, love it, love it. As someone who lives in a different country than my family, and my, a lot of my friends, I find that social media is an incredible way to connect with them. And prior to kind of um, texting and, you know, the whole iPhone craze, um, I wasn't really able to talk to my family unless we had a really good long distance program. I mean, we were like using calling cards and things like that. So I was so thankful when Facebook really became a big thing and we could connect more there and I started um, bringing people back into my life that um, I had known like in elementary school and high school and through various points in my life in the different cities I lived in um, and I loved it. I loved how it brought community and connection together into my life in this really easy way. However, Within the past, I don't know, year, year and a half or so, I have really found myself pulling away from Facebook. I think there's some valuable, valuable things about Facebook. I love a lot of groups that I'm in. However, it all just started to seem way too much for me personally. At one point, Sometime last year in 2016, I started to go through all of the Facebook groups that I was involved in. I got added to so many groups. Facebook stops telling you the number of groups that you're in once you reach 99 plus. So I don't know how many it, it actually was, but it was 99 plus. And I whittled that down to about 20 groups. And those were the groups that like I was actively participating in, like actually wanted to be in, um, and that freed up my newsfeed quite a bit, and it was wonderful and great. Um, and then people just started randomly adding me into up more groups, and I finally just had to say, look guys, this is my space. Do not add me to these things. First of all, it's really bad business if you are a business owner or a consultant for a company and you're just adding random people into your group without first asking if they want to be a part of that, um, if they want you as their consultant. Um, it starts off the business relationship very poorly. Yeah, you might get some sales, but I can tell you that people are getting really poor taste in their mouth with just being randomly added. So that happened. And then two summers ago, we went away to camp. And camp for us is like a two week experience in this sort of kind of remote area. Like it's on an island. Um, there's no chain sort of restaurants or coffee shops or things like that on the island. It's very kind of backwoods without being totally backwoods, but it's, it's remote. And it wasn't even until like two years ago that you could actually even use a cell phone um, on the island. So. Um, when I go there, I like to completely unplug. I don't like to, you know, be on social media. I don't like to be on my phone at all. It's just, it's so cleansing and so relaxing. And at one of those, like two summers ago, I thought, I just want to keep this in my life. I don't want to be stuck on my phone all the time. And I just sort of broke up my relationship with my phone. If you're close with me and you're watching this video and we <laughs> have one another's phone numbers, you know I'm really poor about responding to text messages. And it's not because I don't want to respond to the person on the other end. It's just that my time is super valuable with what I'm doing and who I'm with, which is usually my children. I also want to honor the person's time that I'm texting with and I want to be fully present and engaged in that conversation rather than just shooting off a text and kind of not really engaging with that person wholeheartedly. And I started to bring that into my mindset with things like Facebook. And I use Facebook um, because I'm only on a couple social media sites, Pinterest, which isn't really, I mean, you're not really talking to anybody on there. Um, Instagram, which I love, 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 um, and I've curated my feed there. 
I follow a lot of my favorite YouTube friends. Some of you guys are, um, I, I follow you, and um, a lot of home decor accounts, as well as a lot of really inspiring women who are doing like really amazing things who are just straight up inspiring and I can open up Instagram and it's completely drama free there's no political opinions and all kinds of things like that being shared it's just a space where I can go and receive a lot of really great inspiration and so recently Facebook for me has become a real downer. It's become a really negative place to be. My newsfeed just got started to get really cluttered with political opinions and posts. I'm an American living in Canada, and so I have a lot of um, staunch Trump supporters. I have a lot of people who are very anti-Trump. Um, and, and then I have the whole side of Canadians who are looking into this situation. Um, and everybody's got an opinion. Um, I find that Facebook is, it's sort of, like with social media in general, we've all been given a platform. Um, we've been given a platform to share the good, the bad, the ugly, the things that shouldn't be shared, um, you know, the classic overshare. And I've been guilty of all of it. I'm, just, I'm in no way, shape, or form, like, you know. I'm, I'm no example, let me just say. I am no example of how to do it right. However, I am pulling myself out of the race. A few days ago, probably about a week ago, my heart and my mind were just screaming, retreat, retreat, retreat. And when it came to Facebook, and so I did, and I pulled myself off and I said, I just need space to breathe. Because I had been feeling like part of my brain, part of my mind, and part of my emotions were getting thrown into a blender every time I was on Facebook. And it would whiz and whir and it would become this mushy, nasty mess. And then I had to give that mess to the people that I love the most. My husband, my children, the people in my life. And I was feeling junky and awful and if that whole imagery sounds disgusting to you it's because that's what it was it was just so disgusting and I stopped feeling like I could be a voice of hope and a voice of positivity and a voice of joy in the midst of a whole lot of ugly um, now I follow like the my friends I have amazing friends that, like that's the thing I have I love my crew. I love the people that I'm connected with on my Facebook. Like I have lived a really great life with a lot of inspiring people and a lot of really positive, good people. But the volatile time that we are in right now has brought out a whole lot of emotions, good and bad in people. And for me, from where I'm at in my life, it was it's just been too much and I've had to pull away. So when I say the mindless scroll, I had sort of come to this point where I would just mindlessly scroll through my newsfeed. I would click open articles that people had shared. I would read, um, you know, memes and watch pointless videos and all kinds of things that were taking up mental space that just left me feeling empty. Um, they left me feeling uninspired. It left me feeling gross. It left me, left me feeling like time starved because I was wasting my time just mindlessly scrolling. And I just had to put an end to it. So what I did is I deleted Facebook and Messenger off of my phone. I didn't deactivate my account because I don't intend to get off Facebook. I just need a really good break. And every once in a while, I know I'll pop on and see what people are up to. I'm, you know, I'm connected to like my aunts and uncles and things like that. Um, people that I really want to be connected with. However, I want to do it in a healthy way. And right now it hasn't felt healthy. So I'm saying no to the mindless scroll in 2017. Part of that also has to do with connection. Connection and community and gathering are buzzwords that are thrown around for an ideal that people really want. I think at the heart of it all, we were made for each other. We were made in the image of God and we were created for his pleasure. God created woman, Eve, 
because God didn't want Adam to be lonely. We were made for one another. We were made for community and connection and fellowship and gathering. But I think sometimes we're finding that in really false spaces. Face spaces like Facebook. Um, for a while, we haven't been going to church, probably several months, and it's mostly due to my husband's job. He works 12 days in a row, and then when he has um, the weekend off, like every 12 days, he'll get two days off. He has been out of town, and it's been really difficult to get to church. Sometimes I don't even have a vehicle because he's out of town, and that means my kiddos and I are, are home. We just don't have a way to church. And... I marveled how within that few months, not one person ever reached out to say, hey, we've missed seeing you at church. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? We went to church yesterday for the first time in months. Um, and one woman stopped and she said, Mandy, hi, I haven't seen you in a long time. It's so good to see you. And it was so genuine and so real she's not on Facebook and I think the thing comes is that when we see bits and pieces of each other's lives on Facebook and social media we think we're connected to them we think we know what's going on in their hearts and in their minds and in their lives and to some extent that's really true especially if you overshare and you know share every little bit of thing that you're doing but the reality is is that Unless someone is really putting out their heart, you have no idea. And I think the thing comes is that we think that we are connected to people because we've seen bits of their life over social media. And so we stop actually asking people how they're doing. And we assume that because we've seen them post on Monday, that they're okay until we see them on Sunday. But all these days have gone in between, and we really have no idea what's going on with them. And so it's provided a false sense of community, and I want to quit that. Um, because I found it in my own self. And with the challenge of realizing that nobody's really asked me how I've, how I've been, or to tell me that they've missed me at church, um, I really realized what am am I asking that of other people? Am I noting when people aren't invited places? Am I noting um, the absence of their presence? And so it's been a call for me to look for genuine community and connection with the people who are in my life and to stop um, just relying on this little vehicle of social media. And there are relationships that I've sort of really screwed up on because of social media. I have not been there for friends when they needed my friendship because of the false allure of Facebook and thinking that you are a part of their life when you're not. Um, and I've screwed up in those, in those areas and I plan to humbly ask those people's forgiveness because I have been lulled into a false sense of connection with them because I've seen a few of their posts, or I have tried to read between the lines of a status, like, it's, it's silly, it's silly. And I don't want that. I do not want to live that life. Laura Casey, the question that she asks people, she is like the founder of the Make It Happen movement and goal setting, um, the Power Sheets goal setting system. Um, She's incredible and inspiring. She's an author and amazing and a conference leader. I love her. And the question that she always asks people to start with is, when you look back at your life, when you're 80 years old in your rocking chair on your front porch, what is the life that you wanted to live? And when I look at my life, being addicted to the mindless scroll of Facebook and watching cutesy videos and um, being having like a lot of ugly emotions stirred up in me because of different people's opinions and thoughts and all of the mush and the stuff that we weren't all ever made to consume. We, we, weren't, we weren't made to take all of that in. When I think about who I want to be when I'm 80 years old looking back, I want to be present, I want to be engaged, and I want to be genuinely connected 
with the people in my circle, my village, my family, my children. And I want to live a life well lived. And I don't think it's going to happen staying on my behind, scrolling through Facebook every night. A friend of mine texted me, and she's so amazing. She always checks in on me all the time, and it means so much to me. And her doing that, hey Jennifer, that's you. Um, her doing that has been one of the biggest indicators to me that my life is off kilter. Because I have not been actively doing that to people in my life. And I realize what a, um, I realize how much it means to me for her to just check in and say, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? Or how's your day today? I haven't heard from you in a couple days. How are you? Those things, those check-in moments are absolutely life-changing to me. And um, I want to be that for other people. And I don't want to waste my time on Facebook anymore. I don't want it to rob the relationships that I have because it has been doing that not even so much for my own scrolling but from other people's scrolling I have felt jilted I have felt second rate I have felt like I am not as interesting exciting um, great as whatever it is that they are looking at on their phone I don't want to be the person with my phone on the table when I am at coffee with a friend I want to be fully engaged and I want to be connected and I don't want to be lulled into something that social media provides for me. With that said, of course you're always going to see stuff on my YouTube channel because I love this. I love this way of connecting and I want to be present here. You will see me active on Instagram and probably um, Instagram stories as well. I love sharing there and it's a positive place for me. And I'm trying to get better about commenting back to people because I want genuine community. If you are going to take time out of your day to talk with me in a comment, I want to do that back with you because that means so much to me. I'm a little slower at commenting. You probably have noticed that if you've commented on any of my stuff, I'm slower at commenting. And the reason for that is, is because I want to sit and genuinely engage with you when I have the time to be focused on having a conversation with you. I don't want to answer your comment when I'm busy cooking dinner or I have a few minutes while I'm waiting for, I don't know, my kiddos to finish picking up their toys. I don't know, whatever. I want to engage in a fully present way. And so if it takes a day or two, sometimes three or four to respond to you, please know that it's coming and I just want to do it when I'm fully in, when I'm all in. That's one thing I'm saying to, no to in 2017.